everybody. I definitely know more about Alexa than Siri. Um, so this, my talk is, is building Alexa skills with Node.js. Um, as I was introduced, my name is Taylor Lovett. I'm the vice president of engineering in a company called 10up. I'm an open source community member and I'm a WordPress core contributor. So what's all the hype around voice assistant technology? Voice assistant technology, it refers to software that executes commands based on human voice, um, which is processed via artificial intelligence and natural language processing. Um, so with voice assistant technology, you can do things like search the internet, communicate with other people, buy things, interact with your home, play music, interact with external APIs, and obviously just pretty much whatever you can imagine. Um, there's also integrated products, TVs, smart TVs, cars, um, computers, speakers, refrigerators. Um, voice assistant technology is slowly moving its way into sort of all facets of products. Um, by 2021, there will be 7.5 billion digital assistants in the world. That's from Adweek. Um, right now, the sort of the main players in the field, we have Alexa, which is what I'm going to talk about today. That's Amazon's product. Uh, Google, uh, Siri, obviously, um, Cortana, which is Microsoft's, and Alice, which is Yandex. Um, Alexa currently has 75% of the market share, um, and that's from search engine land. Obviously that will change. A lot of that's due to the fact that Alexa was really first to market in making um, voice assist assistant technology that developers could, could build applications for. So just some vocabulary. Um, skill is, is an Alexa app, essentially. Um, Action is a Google Voice app. Um, Siri Kit apps are for Apple. Um, I'm not even sure if the HomePod has, has yet to be released, but that's like super, super early on. There's not really much you can do with that. And also for Alice, there's the skill. So let's talk about some, some high level concepts for Alexa. In terms of skills, there's, there's quite a few different types. There's custom skills, there are smart home skills, flash briefings, and videos. Um, custom provides the most flexibility and is really what I'm gonna talk about today. Um, smart home, that's, that's pretty self-explanatory. That's a, a skill that you could build if you, if you were wanting to integrate it into like some hardware smart home thing you were building. Uh, flash briefing is like a news update. So you can get news updates from Alexa that provides like a convenient API to do that. Video lets you create video for the new Amazon product with the screen on it and I can't remember the name on it. Um, in terms of hosting, you can host skills on an AWS Lambda or you can use your own infrastructure. Um, Lambda is serverless, which I'll talk a little bit more about later. Um, and you can write skills in Node.js. You can also write them in other languages, but I think it's pretty much everybody's preference to use Node. So some more vocabulary. When you're interacting with um, an Alexa device, it, you're conversation mostly takes this format. Alexa, ask restaurant reviews for the best food. Um, so restaurant reviews is referred to as the invocation name. Um, for the best food type, that's referred to as an utterance. Um, and then food type is, is a slot, which is like a variable. Um, and every utterance has to map to some sort of intent within your skill. Um, so that's those, those things, invocation name, utterance, intent, and slots really are important when you're developing an Alexa skill. Um, again, invocation name, utterance, slot, intent, um, pretty self-explanatory. I will say invocation name, that is, that is the word or phrase that triggers your skill. So every skill has to have one invocation name um, that it is used to, to, to trigger it. 
Alexa requests are handled via JSON. When a user talks to Alexa, pretty simple process, a, a JSON request object is formatted in a special way. It's sent to Alexa and then Alexa responds back with a JSON object. Um, that is parsed by whatever Alexa power device you have and then spoken to the user. Um, there are three types of Alexa requests. There's the launch request, the intent request, and the session ended request. Uh, the launch request is triggered, as, as you probably can expect, when a uh, skill is first opened. So I, I might say, Alexa, open restaurant reviews, and it would open up the restaurant review skill. Um, usually this comes with some sort of welcome message and like some help text, text on how to interact with that skill more. Um, an intent request. This is a request that uh, triggers an intent. Um, basically, when the, when the user is trying to have the skill perform an action for them, that could be, like in the case of restaurant reviews, asking for restaurant reviews or uh, cl even closing the skill would be um, an intent request. And again, session ended request, this is just a request that is triggered when a user closes the skill and Alexa terminates the session. So I, I've talked a bit about intents. When you create a skill, you create custom intents. But Amazon also provides for you a ton of built-in intents. This is like boilerplate code, so you don't have to sort of reinvent the wheel, things that every single skill you're gonna have to do. Like these are three really common ones, stop, help, and cancel. If you're building a, an Alexa skill, you're definitely gonna wanna implement those three things, because if, you if you're not able to respond to those, the user is gonna be confused. So let's look at an actual skill. I've created an Alexa skill for us to look at. Um, it's kind of like an example and proof, proof of concept. It's called Repo Voice. I have it up on, on GitHub and my GitHub. Um, what Repo Voice allows you to do is it allows you to ask Alexa for updates on GitHub repositories that you see fit. So you can set like a list of GitHub repositories you'd like to hear about and then ask Alexa for updates on it. And Alexa will read you like however many issues and pull requests have been created in the last 24 hours for each of those repositories that you designate as, as your favorites. Um, so kind of like some example phrases, Alexa ask repo voice for updates on my favorites. If I wanted to add a, a new favorite repository, Alexa tell repo voice to add favorite node, um, so on and so forth. Um, so I want to give just a brief demo. Hopefully this goes better than the Siri demo. So it's a bit tricky to do this with an Alexa, actual Alexa device right now because, and I'm going to talk more about this, in order to publish a skill to the World Wide Web, you, it has to be reviewed by Amazon, it has to go through like their review board, it takes time, there's like copyright things you have to kind of go through. So this isn't public on, on the skill store right now, but it is publicly viewed code. I'm going to use the Amazon Alexa like testing dashboard to just run some test commands through the skill just so you can kind of get a feel for it. And we'll see if... Oh. It's taking over my... It's taking the sound through the HDMI. But let me let me try this. Let's see. Ask repo voice for my updates. Updates on your favorite repos. Two pull requests have been opened in the last 24 hours. Five issues have been created in the last 24 hours. So I have just one favorite set, and that's Elasticsearch. Um, I could let's see if this works. Tell Repo Voice to add favorite node. 
sorry. I haven't heard of that repo. <laughs> Try it one more time. Tell repo voice to add favorite node.js. Sorry, I haven't heard of that repo. So for this, you can just type it in. Favorite has been added. And then I could, so I, I kind of manually added a favorite, then I can say, ask repo voice for my updates. Here are the updates on your favorite repos. Two pull requests have been opened in the last 24 hours. Five issues have been created in the last 24 hours. The latest release for Node is v9.11.1. Six pull requests have been opened in the last 24 hours. Nine issues have been created in the last 24 hours. Okay. So kind of just a little bit of a demo. Uh oh. There we go. So just to give you kind of a feel for how that would work. So I'm gonna take you through creating a skill. How should a new skill be started? Um, the ask CLI is a useful tool that Amazon provides for, for sort of scaffolding a skill. Um, it's a simple NPM package. Not only does it let you scaffold a skill, but it also lets you deploy. Um, so that takes care of like pushing to Lambda for you and everything, it makes your life much easier. Um, so you can just run a couple commands to set up ask. When you run ask new, that will scaffold a new uh, Amazon skill for you. Um, once you scaffold a skill, you're, this is kind of like the directory structure you're given. Um, that dot ask file, you have some custom deployment code. Um, in Lambda slash custom, you will have the actual code that will be deployed to your Lambda. Uh, you, there's a models folder, which contains your interaction models. I'm gonna talk about that in a second. Um, and a skill.json file, which just describes your skill to Amazon. Um, the skill manifest, again, JSON, it, it, that's skill.json that defines properties that Alexa is going to interpret, like the name of your skill, the description, um, maybe some images that you want people to see when they're searching for skills in the skill store, languages. So just to pull that up real quick. See what that looks like. I need to fix that. So pretty, pretty self-explanatory. Um, you have the name of your skill, which is right here. Summary, um, some example phrases. Um, this is the directory where the code will go to your lambda. And that's most of what this does. This is required to build a skill. Um, the, the next sort of important thing that you, you have to create is an interaction model. Um, again, this is JSON. This defines how intents are going to map to your skill. So remember how I said everything your skill does goes through an intent, um, that an intent kind of represents a user action, but you have to map those user actions to functions in your code, and the interaction model is how you do that. So I'm gonna show you that real quick. So here's my interaction model for the, the repo voice uh, skill. Here's my invocation name. So when somebody says a repo voice to Alexa, that's gonna open up my skill. Um, here I've defined slots, which these are variables. So these are a number of variables that the skill can support when you ask for repositories. I have a ton of them in here. So I'm gonna scroll past that.
Um, and here's kind of what each intent looks like. So here's the repo updates intent. Um, it's named repo updates. It takes this repo name slots. And then these samples, these are the utterances that will trigger this intent. So if somebody says repo voice, and then one of these utter utterances update me on node.js, it will trigger the repo updates intent. So you have to do the set up this kind of mapping for each one of your intents. Um, and then this also, you can see just the built-in intents as well. Just supporting those is very important. So back to this. Okay. So let's talk about the Alexa SDK. Um, the Alexa SDK provides you an API from having to send raw JSON back and forth with a Lambda. Um, so it makes your coding job much easier. Um, obviously the SDK, it's, a, it's an NPM package, so it's built for Node. Um, it lets you easily deal with intents. Um, so kind of like I said, each intent in our model, it's mapped to a handle in our code, even, even for built-in intents. So we're gonna look at some of those um, handlers. Um, so the git favorites intent, this, this is the intent that will be invoked whenever a user says an utterance that's mapped to the git favorites intent. Um, again, all that's defined in the interaction model. For the purposes of this skill, the git favorites, I can ask Alexa, repo voice, what are my favorites, and it would tell me whatever favorites I'd set, which in this case was Elasticsearch and Node. So here's the code for that intent. Um, the first thing that it does is it checks this.attributes.favorites, which the um, Alexa SDK conveniently sets to whatever you know favorites I've already stored. So if there's if there's no favorites, it'll just respond with you currently have no favorites. Tell Alexa to add a, add a favorite. Um, that this dot emit method, you have to emit response ready, and then Alexa will actually respond. If you don't emit that response ready event, nothing will happen and your skill won't work. Um, the code kind of proceeds and iterates through each of the favorite attribute um, to see, adds that to a string and, and responds with each of your favorites and then emits response ready. So pretty straightforward code. Um, I'm gonna show you this dot attributes and how that gets set, but I think like the most important thing is this dot emit, like that's provided for you, the response ready thing, so you, that just, you get that out of the box and it makes your, your life much easier. Um, Alexa supports external API calls, um, and you can use promises, just like any JavaScript application, to issue and wait for HTTP requests. Repo Voice has to make a number of external API calls to GitHub and then wait for GitHub to respond. Um, so like I said before, Alexa waits for that response ready event to be broadcasted before responding. So here's the code for my repo updates intent. Um, the first thing this does is it sets that repo key variable. Um, it just grabs that slot. Remember a slot's like a variable, so whatever, um, whatever repo you're asking for updates on, it, it just grabs that into a variable. Um, if that repo isn't something that the skill can handle, it has to exit early. Um, and then it goes and it calls api.git repo.updates, which is like a sort of helper um, object that I created that issues requests to GitHub. Um, standard promise API, so it just waits for that updates function to respond with a dot then. Um, and when it had, when the promise has been fulfilled, it responds with the updates on that repo. And again, it emits that response ready. So Alexa is just gonna wait until this is done and response ready is emitted. So for my, for this skill, repo updates, 
I have to persist data because I don't want to have to set my favorites every single time I talk to Alexa. Um, you can persist data however you want, store data wherever you want, but the Alexa SDK makes it very easy to persist data to DynamoDB, which is a NoSQL database provided by AWS. Um, this is incredibly easy to do. So all you have to do is, is tell Alexa the name of your DynamoDB table when, when you instantiate your skill in the code and it just handles everything for you. Um, so you can see this um, function right here is, is kind of what instantiates the, the skill and it sets Alexa.DynamoDB table name to repo voice, which is what I named my table. Um, and just by doing that, it sets up everything so I can read and write from that table um, in AWS, so I can persist data across sessions. Um, I'll, I'll say the only thing you have to do is you have to create the DynamoDB table. Sometimes you have to create the DynamoDB table yourself and make sure the permissions are correct, but it usually does that for you. Um, so it's a pretty simple process. So how can we test our skill? Testing is, is difficult um, for a lot of people because you don't want to have to deploy your code to Alexa every single time you want to test something. And obviously, like, if your Alexa skill isn't working as, as you'd like it to, you're not going to be able to get like debugging code from an Alexa dot or anything like that. So you're kind of stuck. Um, so there's a couple tools you can use. There's the Amazon Alexa developer dashboard, which that was kind of what I was showing you before I was interacting with my Alexa. Um, you, can you can deploy a skill in test mode to Alexa, which is pretty cool. So I can deploy, like at my, where I live, like I can deploy my repo voice skill just to my Alexa and interact with it um, since it's in test mode. And I've, I've also built um, a little, test uh, environment called Alexa skill test that lets you play around with your skill locally. So this is kind of what um, the Alexa test dashboard looks like, although they have changed a lot of the, the colors and the fonts and everything like that. But basically the, the point is the same. You enter an utterance, um, service requests, it'll tell you how the JSON is, is being sent, and then the response is how Alexa's responding. So you can see those JSON objects go back and forth, um, and you can kind of get a feel for what's right or wrong that way. You can also set up logging in your Lambda and use like AWS CloudWatch to actually like console.log errors and watch those happen like on the fly. I mentioned my Alexa skill test application, pretty straightforward like isomorphic rack Redux. Uh, it live refreshes as your code updates. Um, it allows you to debug skills and see that debugging output in like your console in your browser real time. So to install this, simply install Alexa skill test as a global NPM package um, and then run it within a, a Lambda skill and make sure you, you point the interaction model to the correct model. And that looks like this, which is a little bit difficult to see, but you basically set request type, you want to send an intent request, um, choose an intent name, choose your slots, you'll see how the request is formatted. Um, and then you'll see how your Alexa is responding. So let's go through an example bug just to give you an idea of how to debug when you have an issue with, with your Alexa skill. Um, so let's say we have an error in our code. Um, Alexa skill test, if there's a problem, it's going to tell you an error has occurred in the response, um, kind of like that. So when you get a message like that, your next question is, well, what, what's the actual error? Like, how do I figure this out? So in this scenario, you would look at, the, at your console, um, and you can see what errors have been returned. Um, very, very easy process. So I would look at the console, and I would see at the bottom, 
there was a, a reference error. I, I made a typo in a variable name, um, and it went as an uncaught exception. So I would just fix that variable name, the program would work, and hopefully I would get a proper response from a Alexa skill test. Um, deployment, the, the ask CLI tool makes it super easy. All you have to do is just do ask deploy from within your, your skill directory in your console and it will deploy it to AWS Lambda and just that's it. Um, that's the easiest way to do it. Only takes like a minute or two. Um, there's definitely a lot of good tools around Amazon Alexa for, for building skills to, to make it a, a pretty seamless process. I mentioned publishing. After you deploy your skill, you can submit it to be reviewed and to get published in the Amazon Alexa skill directory. Um, Amazon is gonna test it, make sure it works right. They, they wanna make sure there's a good user experience for people who download your skills. Um, Amazon offers rewards to developers who submit skills. Um, so if your skill, if they like it, they'll give you free hosting and stuff like that. Um, you, as I mentioned, you need to provide information like copyrights and images and make sure it kind of meets the Amazon standards. Um, that's pretty much it. As, as I mentioned before, I work for a company called TenUp. We're a remote company in the US and, and we are looking for developers. Um, if anybody's interested, I have Twitter and email. And that's all. Thank you. Uh, questions? Just quick. Uh, so, first of all, thanks. Uh, I kind of didn't get about um, uh, how uh, does my skill will. Um, you know, implementing a whole system. I mean, for instance, I uh, wrote a skill, then I push it to Amazon, like propose my skill, and after they kind of approve it, uh, what next? Is it uh, becomes available worldwide, so for all uh, users? Yeah, what? pretty much. I mean, you just send it to Amazon, and then when you're ready for them to review it, you click like publish. And then if they've accepted it, it becomes public to everybody. Um, and then from then on out, every time you make a change, they have to review the change to your skill. Okay, and uh, the other one like, uh, those uh, invoke uh, phrases which I use in my skill. Uh, so they become like occupied, so uh, after they, that no one can use them, yeah? Yeah, the invocation name, yeah. Okay, thanks. Hey, thank you for your speech. Uh, my question is about the config you've shown. There was like a huge list of GitHub repositories. So uh, if I understood correctly, you cannot uh, get non-predefined uh, non -predefined, non um, variable name. So Alexa cannot guess the variable. You have to uh, get a list first. So. It's, it's a little bit tricky. Alexa uses NLP and it will try to guess variable names. So it'll try to give you a variable variable, so to speak. Um, but that's kind of like up to their algorithm and I, that's something that I think is still very much in process. So you can actually define a variable uh, that Alexa will try to get from your speech. Yes. And it will not uh, be predefined in yes. your config. You, yes, you can. Okay, thank you. Uh, questions? Okay, uh, thank you, Taylor. Thank you.